everybody and welcome to another Houdini tutorial. Today we'll be learning about clouds. Um, if you've ever used any of the shelf tools in Houdini, you'll understand that it mostly creates static clouds. And for any intents and purposes, sometimes you don't always want static clouds. You want animated clouds and that can be a bit hard to get. So we're going to go over one method today on how to create animated clouds. Um, if anybody knows, I am a huge fan of clouds. I write a lot about how to render clouds and what clouds are exactly in Houdini and the scientific physics of clouds. Um, I'm also a big fan of underwater scenes, but that will be in a later episode. Um, if you go to Center for Science and Education, you can learn about different types of clouds. And I would recommend this if you're ever doing something like this, which is like a sunset scene where the light is like refracting and creating those orange and blue effects that may be harder to get if you don't know what you're doing. So let's start right into it. For this lesson, I'm going to use a sphere um, because as we know, if you don't have a closed ge geometry for a cloud, it won't work in Houdini. So. We're going to go to cloud effects. And for this, I'm using a cloud rig and I'm gonna be using a shelf tool cloud rig because um, it's the same, it creates the same setup as if you were doing it manually. The only difference is that it puts your geometry in a different uh, geo sop and then your whole cloud rig in another sop. So right now, um, if we modify anything in our geo will get different cloud shapes. And I'm just going to modify it for now. Um, if I was getting really particular and I was doing something where I wanted to mimic a scene like this, I'd probably create a grid, scatter some points, copy geometry to those points and add more mountain noise. And then that would be my geometry. You know what, just for fun, let's do that. So let's create a grid. Uh, let's move over to our grid and let's zoom out. So, hmm, let's scatter. And we can turn those down to 500. I don't think we'll need a lot for this. I'm gonna turn off relaxed iterations because I like how it creates a more random effect for our clouds. And then I'm going to go copy to points, points and geometry. As you can see, before we even activate our copy to points, we can already see where our geom geometry is in Houdini 17. Um, it's going to be a bit clustered, so let's create an attribute called p-scale. Ta-da! And we're not gonna see anything because our p-scale is at zero. So let's go from one to 0 0.01. Debate that and see what's happening. Hmm. What's happening, Houdini? What are you gonna do for me? That's cute. So I'm just gonna turn that down there. I'm actually gonna turn this into an attribute randomize. My bad. As you can see, the default for attribute randomize is color. We're going to change that to p-scale. There we go. That's way more better. I think I'm going to go to 200. That works. And we'll add our mountain node. Already we have a nice cloud field forming. And so honestly, the mountain noise is up to you. Random as it as you see fit. And then I'm going to create a null because I find this just keeps my nodes in order and it helps me understand where I am in my geometry. So I'm gonna go cloud geo out. So reactivate my geometry node with my cloud in. Already we have some nice clouds. But let's render this to see what's happening, just for fun.
looks very, very boring. <laughs> so let's go to our out and our mantra node and let's go to the render settings. Already it's on ray tracing, which I think is great. Um, however, I think I want my diffuse quality to be two, my global quality to be two, volume quality maybe a three. Awesome. That looks good. My diffuse limit to uh, two. And go to cloud. And just for this tutorial, I'm gonna do a wacky color for the clouds. Simply, simply for visualization, I find that's easier for me to see. So I'm gonna turn our clouds bright, bright red. And so we can see our edges. And the cool thing about the cloud shader in Houdini 17 is that if you adjust the cloud density, you can see the density changing. Um, density multiplier, you can see that changing. Um, and cloud light, you can also tell it how to, what color to refract the light inside your cloud. So for this, I'm gonna do a pinky color because our cloud color is red. And that kind of works good. Um, so let's go back to our object layer. Make sure our material is on our cloud. That's good. And let's dive right in. So already our clouds look a little bit boring. I'm actually going to go back in here. And maybe scale our clouds up a bit. Just for fun. Yeah, I think I like that better. And already we can see a somewhat similar cloud pattern in our sky to that. Somewhat similar. So just for cloud noise, be careful when you're scaling up the spatial scale. If you go too far up something like 19 or 20, you're going to notice your computer is going to start to lag and the noise is going to be very slow at loading. So I'm the highest I would go in my case for my computer would be 0 0.8. And the amplitude, I'm gonna go three. Um, actually, you know, let's go like that. Two, six. Clouds, sampling divisions. I'm gonna put that at a 60. It's gonna cook a bit. Uh, density. So here is a density remap. It's very nice um, and customizable. You can already see as I'm moving this density spline that the edges and our density are being remapped in our cloud. So it's honestly a personal preference thing. Um, we are going to play with the density a little bit right now in a volume VOP and that the volume VOP is how we are going to animate our cloud. So let's go to a volume vault and connect that here. And let's dive inside. So the cool thing about the volume vault is that you can apply a bunch of, and animate a bunch of different types of noise to your clouds. So in this case, I'm gonna use a curl noise because to me that works the most effective of all of them. Um, what I'm going to play with right now is not the density, we're going to add that in later, but I'm going to play with the position of the cloud and I'm going to go to noise and wrap that in. And already you can see our clouds have changed a little bit. Um, there's less density than there should be. Uh, but yeah, you can see some definite changes. I'm also going to make my timeline go down to 72 frames. And I'm going to turn up no, attenuation. I think that's what I want. Could be wrong though. Let's see what happens. Already, yeah, there we go. You can see our density getting thinner, the closer attenuation is to zero. And the higher attenuation is, the thicker our cloud field gets. So I'm gonna animate this for fun. And so at one, I'm gonna have the attenuation be this number. At 72, I'm going to, nah, at 60, I'm gonna have this at maybe like there. And, Mush that down. All right, so let's go back here. Look up at our sky. It's going to be slow if you play it back here. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to render a flipbook. 
So we'll start and we'll let that load. So while that loads, let's talk a little bit more about clouds. Um, if you go to my website and I'll link it below the YouTube video, um, I tell you how you can animate clouds a little bit more in different ways, rendering clouds. Um, for this case, we're also gonna go back in and add a volume limit um, and a volume, maybe a volume filter, depending on how our cloud turns out. Um, and also, my I also tell you a bit about how rendering and incorporating clouds with sky works. And I'm just going to go to my clouds physics page and I talk a little bit more about the signs behind clouds, such as contrails and what contrails can morph into. It's very, it's, I find it fascinating. You might too as well, but back into Houdini. So let's play this back a bit. It's a bit glitchy, but it's working. So let's dive back into our volume VOP. Parameter. Actually, maybe the frequency as well. I might play with the frequency. Um, I think I'll stay. My bad. <laughs> uh, we'll go to 72 again and maybe make that a 0 0.14 and render the flipbook again. I do find when, especially when animating volumes, you always want to be rendering as a flipbook to see how it's going along. Um, because volumes, if you screw them up, can go terribly wrong, terribly fast, and it, they can be a bit of a mess. So always bring out your end play when you feel like it. So let's play that back, see what happens. Okay, so we got a bit more fast movement in our clouds, which is nice. We still have a little bit glitching there, but I think we'll be able to cover that up with our next step. So as you may have noticed, we're not doing anything with our density attribute. We're actually going to focus on that now and we're going to add that back in to our density field on our volume output. So all we're going to do is connect our density to our input two, and we should see our clouds begin to form. Now, you may notice it just automatically added the full amount of density back into our cloud. And in this case, I don't really want that. So what I'm going to do, put my density in, and bring down the attenuation a bit, and match it up the way I see fit. Um, so I get that poofy outline, and that's what I like. Now, for this intents and purposes, in order for this animation, I'm going to go to my display options, go to background, display a background image, and I'll click that off, and then turn this to dark. And also turn that. Good. Um, we'll render that out as a flipbook so you can also see it again as a rendered cloud and see how it's moving. It's important when you're also rendering clouds to think about how the light is moving through the cloud, not necessarily at how the cloud is moving itself. If you ever look up at the sky in any given day, currently it's raining outside, um, but certain clouds have a higher or lower opacity than others. So the certain amount of light that goes through them is different. Um, and that reflects light differently as well. So that works a little bit. We have a little bit of glitching in the beginning. I think that could be phased out a bit for adjusting the animation. It may also have something to do with the render setting. So let's go back in and fix the flickering. Let's go up here. Actually, dive back in. And I was playing with the attenuation, I think. Yes. Pro, promote parameter. Um, 
Do I have turbulence? Yes, there we go. So also promote our turbulence as well. We'll come up here and we'll go back down over here. And I might, what I might do, prevent that from jumping up a little bit. Um, put that maybe at nine, one. And, hmm, at the beginning, I might want to put this here. Put this here. So our clouds kind of gently fade into our scene. That may or may not work, but we'll see what happens. As rough as this animation is, it is a moving cloud. So what we're going to do is focus more on the render settings now and making sure these clouds appear as we would like them to. Because rendering volumes is different from rendering geometry. If you're rendering anything with geometry, I would actually recommend physically based rendering. But the reason we're using ray tracing is we want rays of light to be pushed through the clouds and refract through the clouds. So now we're going to render these. Go to clouds. We can see some interesting stuff starting to happen. Um, we can see our cloud color being pushed to the edge of the cloud. We can see the cloud light being pushed to the center. Um, what else can we do? Let's go to out. Limits are good quality. I'm going to crank that up to a four. We've got a little bit more detail now. Depending on what type of computer you're using, you might want to be a little bit more careful with your render settings as that can create more strain on your computer. But as you can see, our clouds are forming nicely. We've got some nice noise on the edges. And if we just skim through our timeline, we can see a clouds becoming way more fainter at the beginning and at the end. They are a lot more brighter and a lot more sporastic. So that will be at the end of this 2D, 2D tutorial. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Kate. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.